Okay, this is a uh, movie any percent tutorial, and any percent just got updated because we found Mindy Skip. That was a trick we were looking for for a few years, and it allows us to finish the game with 40 tokens instead of 50, and that can potentially save upwards of 18 minutes in any percent. So this route and this video is starting off at BBH because the regular any percent route is unchanged until this point, and I'm going to provide links for the route up until this point. But this is the first segment that has a difference. We now uh, do the level forwards instead of backwards, and uh, we don't activate the the end fight early on. And Mindy Skip involves. Um, detonating a uh, upgraded bowling ball before we warp into SCDA Spongeball. We don't know why it's specifically SCDA Spongeball, but whatever other Spongeball tokens we would try, or challenges, no matter what, it just didn't work. So, a very odd situation. So, you're just going to progress to the le through the level normally. And you're going to get here, and this is one of uh, the first actual annoying parts of the run, probably. Because you have to do a uh, one-frame jump, which is not very fun. Especially with Patrick. You need to judge the frame that he's finished with his damage animation. Then press A. And then you need to be able to re react and turn around. Then hold A. To do the second jump. And then if you fail, you hold down left, or down right, to get back on the platform. Ouch. Yeah, you just cartwheel through the level, collect uh, TNT stacks, there's a lot of them around here. And then over here we do kind of a cool momentum trick where we um, use the ice block and uh, we do j we do a gigantic swings on the ice block and then use our momentum to jump to the next platform. And that's how you miss it. If you get hit, you'll just instantly miss it. It's safer to land on this nut, and you won't get, like, hit by the rocket. So here we're getting the throwing the fruit electric warp. We come back here uh, way later in the run. So yeah, just progress through the level normally. Once you get to the sponge ball, you're going to finish this sponge ball challenge. And then you're going to come back to be to this part of the level, and then progress to the end of the level, and then go down the slide to activate the final fight. Because normally we would do uh, frame precise jumps to activate the trigger, but since we're so close to it already, we could just casually finish the level and activate it that way. Okay, here you just want to slow down so you don't get knocked off. You can't make this cycle unless you've moved extremely fast and done a really precise cycle when it comes to the platforms that fall. Here you can go for a... You can uh, press select or you can press start and you can uh, prepare yourself to press start before the token. Well, actually, you couldn't do it in the beginning route because you have to come back to the level. So, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> but you just come back to the level and finish it casually. I don't know how I got hit there. Yeah, 
Yeah. But yeah, finish the level casually. Um, I'll just warp to it because yeah. You'll end up here and you'll watch a stupid cutscene and then you go down the slide and fight some enemies. So that's the route for BBH. Inst instead of doing uh, one token when we entered there before, now we do three. So then you would do no weenie parking anywhere, which is an auto scroller. So you just drive the whole day. The gates are locked. Yeah. And then after that is your first backtrack. So what you're going to do in this route is go to SD, go back to sandwich driving, finish time challenge, ring challenge, and macho time challenge. And after that, you'll want to go to rub -a dub and just finish the time challenge. And then after that, you can, if you finished no weenie parking already, you can warp straight to frogfish. But if you do uh, late weenie finish, then you can warp back to no weenie parking. Then you would fight frogfish. I probably should upgrade all my moves. Yeah, you kind of just like juke the frogfish and then hit him in the back. And also, I probably should show a trick in Rub a Dub because there's only one trick that we do, but it's just a little weird and precise. There's also a tutorial made by Manix05 already of it, so I might as well just link that too. Yeah, you finish Frogfish and then you do Rock Slide, which is uh, I guess I'll show the route for Rock Slide just because the jump at the end. If you don't know where to go for it, you'll just like, you can easily fall off and plummet to shot. the bottom. I wish I had save states because that takes like four minutes to get to. Mm. Yeah, I guess I'll just show it because this is a beginner beginner route. This route is remarkably easy for beginners compared to how any percent used to be. Mindy skip is not hard to do for any player, so therefore you can change the token route and do all sorts of tokens that are easier or harder, which is really beneficial. Yeah, you kind of just like, you can do little little jumps. Don't like sacrifice your entire run just to get a little jump though. Just do little jumps. You go up to the the right path here. When Mindy said deep, she wasn't kidding. Try to do like an elongated double jump there so you don't touch the ground until the very last possible point. Well, that was different. Right now, my points are not indicative of how many points you want to have. Um, the upgrade route is unchanged from the regular tutorial. 
So you'll want to be getting up an upgrade point just around here for Sponge Bowl. Coincidentally enough, Sponge Bowl upgraded is one of the factors of Mindy Skip, which is very surprising. So here's the portion that I did this entire level to show. Um, you kind of do a really long jump. And um, the way we used to do it, we used to go off the ledge really early. Like right about here. But if you go up further and wait till you're at the flower and then press A, the, game and the, ca the game's camera will uh, direct you straight to the platform. The way we used to do it was extremely risky, and we would actually lose runs to something that was very free. So now there are men is the next level. It's it's pretty much the same level. I'll just show it because it's epic. SCDA is still the same too, but SCDA got changed minorly. So now you'd upgrade your sponge bowl, which I already have. I like to hit this, but you know, preference. We're men. So, this is a, a weird little skip. There's like two methods of doing it. I don't like this method. Uh, you can, yeah, you can walk off that ledge enough to get a double jump facing that side. Well, I guess I can't do that now, but the way you do it is you get like a double jump like that. I think that's my first time ever doing it, but the way you would do it otherwise is you jump off that edge that I was at and you do it just a regular double jump and it's not that hard. It's just it's it's another it's another little preference thing. All right, there you want to like avoid getting hit cuz then you lose all your momentum. Jump on that little sack and uh you'll save a little time, I think. Here's a bungee challenge. I like this bungee because um, when you go under the platforms, they instantly break when you come back up. Which, I don't think other platforms do that. You don't want to get hit, so be careful. Also, I don't like when they turn around, so be careful about that. Having all upgraded moves will be a little bit of a disadvantage for one of the tricks coming up because it gives you a longer bash animation. Upgraded bash. Here's another bash boost. Oh, I missed it. Oh, I didn't miss it. It's a little weird doing bash boost when you have an upgraded bash because of how long the animation lasts. So this, is, this is a little bit of an upgrade, a, uh, updated strat. You kill that enemy and then you stand here and then do your bowling shots. Uh, you only need to hit it three times with the electricity and it just uh, does the cutscene. So there you just turn around and jump on two of the door handles. And for this you need to jump on the very edge. Right here is perfect. You could be like right here. Which is even better. It, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're close enough to that edge. That you can get full height in the jump. 
here you can kind of skip a little ledge grab. So this is a double bash boost because we do one and then we instantly do another. It's a little harder with upgraded bash, but what you want to do is uh, line, line yourself up the way I did. Go for a double jump, hold Y, and then don't move your control stick so that Spongebob can turn around. If you move your control stick like forward, he'll have too much speed and you'll just like run past his head or fall past his head. So this is monster skip. Um, the way I do it is I like to balance myself or I like to put Spongebob's right corner top right corner of his head aligned with that yellow dumb dumbbell and I turn to face the camera and I get up against this edge and then when the monster is at the peak of his uh, animation when his mouth is the most forward then I jump and then you go for a double jump spin and you press A when you land on the eyelash and then you have to react in time to uh, land on the eyelash again and then hold Y again so that you can get a jump out of that bash. So you uh, you essentially do two bash boosts. Uh, if you miss the eye, you, you die. Pretty epic. I think that's actually more difficult with upgraded bash. Yeah. Makes the animation really long. You won't have that in a run. You never upgrade Bash in a run. Okay, now is uh, one of the harder tricks in this game, but since this is a beginner tutorial, you don't have to do it. Which is actually amazing. I'll just show it for memes, I guess, but this is floating block skip. And then you can do a start buffer into the token. Um, you just do this. You press select twice and hold start, and it, it makes the character move further than it usually would. Which is really good for token frames, because you want to be in the token's hitbox. Yeah, you just progress the level normally, and uh, I think there's a minor skip at the end of the level. I'll link it if I find it, but you can uh, skip like five seconds of the ending of this level. So you would just spawn back and collect the final token of the level once you finish this, and then you'd head off to Shell City dead ahead. Plankton is using... Okay, so now you'd want to upgrade your throw, which I already have upgraded, and you throw at that button. Just cartwheel through. So here's toilet skip. Um, I think beginners can ha beginners can definitely have a, a good amount of trouble with this. But once you understand what's happening, and, one, and once you understand like what angles are better, um, you can make sure Patrick goes where he's supposed to. What you want to do is cartwheel right past this and then go forward and then turn up left. So it's definitely a little muscle memory. And then you kind of jump around that with a, a full double jump with a cartwheel. So yeah, for here you just progress to this point and then you want to like do a cartwheel double jump from this point. Because you can see the walls like not very solid and not very straight so you can use a few angles to just get out there and do a full double jump. So what I just did there, I cartwheeled off the edge and I got a double jump. You you want to get as much horizontal distance as possible because if you miss this ice block, 
um, you just die. And if you didn't set your checkpoint to here, then you will respawn way far back. So you're doing a full double jump after a cartwheel and um, you're spamming Y. Okay, for this, you're manipulating the enemy to like breathe on you and then double jumping and pressing Y. So what that does, it gives you a bunch of forward momentum. So what you do is you swing yourself back and abuse the momentum to keep yourself infinitely moving forward. I could just keep doing this till the sun burns out. But what you want to do is just like get a full double jump here and then another and then find that spot without having without having a ledge grab preferably find that spot and then cartwheel up and around that red thing so you can get enough height to ledge grab here so what you do at this point is we're go we're going to do SCDA SpongeBob here so that we can have the warp ready later in the run what you want to do is throw that melon around there and then use it to get yourself in here. Um, I think you can just enter Spongeball from that point and it might be optimal with just Patrick because you're going to do the level anyways. So don't do what I did, just enter the level and then do it. So what's weird about this Spongeball challenge is it's the only Spongeball challenge which, which if you detonate an upgraded Spongeball, Sponge Bowl and then instantly warp to this token and then instantly warp to Knucklehead, Mindy will just like explode. Like Mindy does not function after dying one more, after dying one time, Mindy will not function and you just skip uh you skip infinitely having to talk to her through a text box and you can actually finish the level without having to pay her 50 tokens. And we don't know why it only has to do with this level. Really don't know. So I think you teleport to uh, to guitar challenge after that. And you jump and you you just do a throw. Uh, don't wait until you hit the peak of your jump. Just do it while you're rising, so that you don't do it way too high. But here you just kind of like throw your safe uh, where you're not getting auto-targeted to land on this crate. And you get on it, you do a double jump, or you do a cartwheel double jump. And then for this, it's like, really, this is muscle memory. You have to press A, the frame that Patrick jumps in the slide. And um, you have to do it a bunch of times. That was not what I wanted to happen. That wasn't so tough. And you can also do a start buffer on the token. If I was able to get a double jump, I would have been ready to. So we skip SCDA floating block. We don't have to do SCDA floating block in this route, which is ve very, very nice. And I'm dead.
So here is actually a, a jump that's kind of easy to mess up. You kind of want to like... Don't let yourself cartwheel off too far or else you'll lose too much height. But don't like uh... Don't overthink it or else you will just fall. So for that I just kind of just... All you have to do is jump around uh, a tiny invisible wall get that ledge grab. It's not difficult. So for that, I just like... The second I end up at that point, I should not have jumped. The second I end up on the fan, I go for my double jump. Because usually the button will be on a cycle where it's ready to be jumped on. Because the button does an up and down cycle. And when it's at the peak of its cycle, you can't, uh, you can't make it. So you have to judge it visually. And that's how you fall. I'm showing every outcome right now. <laughs> it's kind of hypnotic. Okay, yeah, maybe wait a second so you don't hit a fan blade. And then just... So this is actually a tricky part. You want upgraded throw for this part. Because you want to hit these buttons without wasting too much time. So that's a lucky first press because the the Merv didn't block it. And here the Merv is gonna block me, so I can't do anything about that except hitting the hitting the spawner was actually the best idea because it killed the Merv too. So that's a pretty optimal way of doing the end of this level. So for this you want to start charging a full throw at the at the peak of your jump. Okay. And just land on the token. So then you do Dennis 1. I'll show Dennis 1 fast cycle. Although beginners don't really need to go for this. It just saves like a few seconds. And it's optimal. You're kind of interrupting all his scripts. Or like his battle animations. Once you mess up, you want to upgrade to throw on every or upgrade to slam and throw on everything. And then you do Dennis too. Oh wait, no, you do uh, Sunday driving. I'm not going to show Sunday driving in its entirety. I only explain how to do the level. So in route to, in in lap 2, um, when you're going through the Goofy Goober Museum, you go through the collapsible wall. And going through the collapsible wall makes Goofy Goober despawn, which is very, very useful. And uh, the old tutorial did it, if you don't know what I mean. But I will show this part, where you just like hold left, and then uh, nitro across that, and for some reason, it just puts your character's hitbox directly over the fence. So that's very useful. Then you would just uh, finish the level from here. So... I think next is Gesk. Yeah, you just finish the level normally, and then you do Gesk. I'll show the route for Gesk because it is actually a bit complicated. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm not too familiar with the updated route, but this is the route I do for guest pipes. Um, to hit all the faucets, you have to hit multiple faucets to progress through the level, which can be kind of annoying. So there I like to I like to get hit twice so that when I get to the next segment I can uh just directly kill myself on a TNT and it will respawn me where I need to be. Ouch. 
damage. So, to get the next set, uh, set of faucets, I start off on the yellow pipe. And, uh, then I jump to the orange pipe. This jump can be kind of Monk S. If you jump too far, you can actually miss the pipe, which is very unfun. So there you go from uh, orange to orange in that giant jump, and then you end up on blue. Get that, then you go back to red. So if you were a uh, beginner, you just follow the red pipe, but if you are an intermediate player, you can hold down on this pipe and then just turn and do a double jump. And if you did it correctly, you'll usually land on the, the lamp. So that's Gesk. Finish the level. Then you do Dennis 2. So, it's kind of hard to explain Dennis 2 because it happens so fast. Like, I'll, I, I have to reload it because that went too fast. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do, I see Dennis, I'm going to hit him once with a full charged bowl, and then I want to move to the left and get ready to hit him with a full charged bowl, and then the second this one hits, another. I like to turn around like this so it doesn't spawn an enemy. Do one more full shot, juke the enemy, hit him with the, you don't have to hit him directly for the last hit, but if you hit him with the electric charge behind his back, it will skip the animation and just finish the challenge and kill Dennis. So one full charge bowl, wait till he moves, second full charged, third full charged, except that wasn't full charged. Fourth, and then you can hit him with the back of the, you can hit him with the electric electricity, you don't have to hit him directly with the bowling ball for the final hit. So now, what's good, is we don't have to uh, do Gesk 2. We don't have to return to Gesk because we we already did Sandwich Driving 102. And uh, those replace Gesk Jumps. In the advanced route, you would do Gesk Jumps over uh, Sandwich Driving uh, Ring and Macho. Okay. Okie dokie. Uh, I think we go to Plank now. Uh, I know we go to throwing the fruit electric at some point, but I think we go to Plank first. I didn't really like order this correctly. <laughs> yeah, I go to Plank. Yeah, this is kind of scuffed, but it's a it's a tutorial. Okay, you go to plank. Um, I don't know if I could do this trick with upgraded badge. Oh yeah, you can. So you just want to hit that button and then hold upright and jump, and you can get a a jump off that. I think the only backtracking in the new any percent is throwing the fruit electric. That seems to be it. Yeah, just try not to get hit. It's very easy to die and lose progress and end time.
So now you switch characters, grab this ice block, and then immediately grab the melon. Hold upright. Try to get off this platform. If you don't get off fast enough, you can actually miss this cycle. Throw the melon. Head this way. The second you activate this, which is right there, just like exit. And then you can come over to this token. You know, oh. Well, if that happens, there's a backup. That's a good opportunity to show the backup. Um, you can just do that, and then that. That's the backup in case you were too slow. And here's a start buffer if you feel up for it. Well, I missed it, but that's how you would do it. So then you go to combat arena. And for combat arena, just spam B. And then just cartwheel. You've now defeated the hardest combat arena, probably in existence. Alright, so you're going to get more bounce, and then you're going to go to Throwing the Fruit Electric. And after that, you're going to come to the beginning of Planktopolis and get the guitar. Because by that point, you should have 40, I think. And then from that point, you can just finish Planktopolis. Now you go to throwing the fruit electric. And for this one, um, really about timing. You could probably make this just be really fast. It's all about how fast you can react there. Alright, if you've uh, done all the things so far that I've mentioned, you should have 40 tokens and you can teleport beginning of Planktopolis and get um, the guitar from Mindy. You press R and mash B, then come to more bounce please. So for this, you kind of just like are mashing A, but also holding up in between every uh, press so that you can actually travel forward. Here you just turn around right on the edge, make sure you're on the edge, and then those missiles will auto-target you, and then you can just, just jump across with a bash boost. Here, don't get hit. It looks like you'll get hit most of the time, but the only way to get hit there is if the rockets hit you, because you're moving fast enough that the laser usually won't lock on. Unless you're, like, dawdling in, it, in its zone. So here's a Plank GGC. I probably sh could show Soup Skip for the beginners, but Plank GGC isn't too bad. I'd say go for this if you're like on OG because it's easier to do uh, things like this. Oh. 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 Okay, I went too far forward where it's like the collision messes up at that point. Oh, oh fuck. 
Why didn't I glide? <laughs> okay, we're just gonna so show soup skip. So soup skip is much easier. You just um jump, spin, jump, and then mash A. Uh, preferably deeper onto the thing. Yeah. So this. Yeah, I should have shown this in the first place. This is the simple version. Um, you just do some wall jumps. Not too bad. Don't do plank GGC if you're a beginner. XD. So yeah, just hit the wall. Activate those things. And uh, wall jump. Don't... Oh, shit. <laughs> Don't do that, like I was about to say. Don't jump too high. Or else you have to wait. Yeah, I'm having fun. But yeah, we're coming up to the, the cool trick that involves skipping Mindy. Which is the main highlight of this run now, pretty much. The very, very end. <laughs> Alright, here you want to walk to the e edge and then go for a bash boost. After the platform is like drowned, you can still get hit by the rocket there. It's, I want to say it's like uncontrollable, but I, I guess it depends on what angle you use when you jump backwards. So there, if you land there, you just want to jump a little bit and it will give you the checkpoint and then you can just progress. Use your upgraded guitar. Okay, so here is Mindy Skip. So, since we already unlocked the warp for SCDA Spongeball, the only step that we have is to go to no cheese. Why no cheese, you ask? Because we need to detonate an upgraded sponge ball in a SpongeBob level, and at most of the other SpongeBob level, SpongeBob levels, we we attempted this with. It didn't work, and it would crash the game. So we found that no cheese seems to be the safe level. So what happens here is you you load into the level. And then now, if I warp to Knucklehead, I should be able to void out in the pit. And when I void back in, it will start the ring challenge, and then it will let me reload the level and progress. So what I'm doing here is I'm holding A, and I'm pressing B. So I'm just pressing B back to back because I want to go through this as fast as I can. And then when I start falling in the pit, I'm not going to press any buttons. I'm just going to wait to see if my camera is default when I despawn. If the camera is default, you got the trick. So now I don't touch my controller. And the camera is default, so I got the trick. And now you warp back to the level. And then you do the level casually. Yes, I am still in awe that this trick works. I truly, truly don't understand why, but I'm just going with the flow.
like something important just fell off. <laughs> I guess the only thing you have to worry about at this point is dying. So don't die. Pretty much. Uh, you can use nitros through the park here. Uh, I just didn't have any. And you've skipped Mindy and finished Knucklehead. Pretty epic. Oh, did I crash? Okay. <laughs> I thought I crashed for a second. I got scared. Okay. Uh, yeah, the route is viable. Okay. If I crashed there, that would have been me realizing the route is not viable. Okay. But yeah, if you've done the trick correctly, um, for some reason there will be a bowling ball uh, aura left behind. Oh, it does go away. Oh, shit. I had no clue. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, apparently, it does go away. So, if you don't want to see it, you can get rid of it. Uh, I don't like this cycle. Or, I don't, I don't like these cycles because of uh, the flame. Really annoying. So, just try not to... Try to jump in between it like a jump rope, kind of. That's weird. When this trick happens, um, in the the origin of Neptune, you see the remnant of a bowling ball. It's weird that it, it goes to the origin of the level. That's what confuses me. But yeah, this was uh, my attempt at making a beginner route for the new movie Any Percent, featuring Mindy Skip. Mindy Skip is very fair. I, I can't believe how much time this trick saves, and I can't believe that it exists in general. But it is very, very, very useful. Very, very cool. And this song will get me very, very copyright striked. Epic. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, yeah, you don't want to put yourself in that position. That's that's a a dangerous position. Okay.
Yeah, this is why sometimes people kill the spitters. And because of that, I have to finish it now for the culture. I also have upgraded spin, which I did not consider. Ha! <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of hard to spin when you're av avoiding. Oh my god, okay. I that, is, that, is, that is the easiest point to mess up. Okay. That's the new movie, Any Percent. And that was a beginner version of the, of the route. But what's good is that the advanced version of this route is the exact same, Kill except him. Kill him, you idiot. Idiot. for SD-102 and Geth-2. You just interchange two of the tokens. You interchange the final two tokens of SD-102 with Geth, Ring, and Time. So, it's really, really, really cool. Yeah, thanks for watching.